Home ownership, it is a dream for many. You've got the keys, you're moved in, you got this sense of accomplishment, but soon you are hit with a reality check. Insurance bills and tax documents, those homeowners insurance premiums, they're more than you anticipated. We're seeing that a lot right now. And if you're renting out of space, the renter's insurance adds another layer of complexity. Then there's tax season where you find yourself drowning in paperwork, trying to make heads or tails of what can be actually truly deducted. Today, you're lucky because we're diving into those pain points to shed light on the deductions you might be leaving on the table. You don't want to miss this. Today, we're going to be talking about insurance and taxes and big write-offs you definitely don't want to miss. But before we get started in that, we got a quick word from our sponsors and thank you for steadily for putting this together for us. Traditional insurance companies make it painful to get a policy with lengthy lead times, lengthy paper forms. Landlords deserve better. With Settly.com, you get next day affordable landlord insurance in literally just a few clicks. From single family homes to short term rentals, apartment buildings, and beyond, Steadily.com gets you the best coverage. Save serious time and energy on your rental properties. Visit Steadily.com to get a commitment free quote today. So before we get started, I want to talk about a few things when it comes to taxes and obviously insurance. This can be super cumbersome. When I got into real estate investing, I did not know anything about taxes. I did not know anything about insurances. By delving deep into insurance and tax intricacies, you power yourself. You empower yourself in the sense of taking control of this complex area. And this mastery can boost your confidence and reduce stress that's associated with financial management. And one of the most important things is avoiding pitfalls and many people inadvertently miss out on write-offs or stumble into tax pitfalls simply because they're not aware. So by focusing on this topic, you're equipping yourself to sidestep any potential mistakes, thus saving you money, time, and avoiding any complications. Insurance premiums, especially mortgage insurance premiums are some of the most overlooked deductions since getting the lowest tax liability should be a priority you need to know which deductibles you can make on your insurance premiums. And yes, you are actually permitted to take tax deductions for the entire landlord insurance premium for your rental property. One of the best things about real estate is that the IRS actually considers normal business expenses when renting out real estate. So if you are a you know an investor that has multiple different properties, you are in luck because most people in this space, most investors have their properties under LLCs. And the cool thing about that is that the IRS will definitely take a look at the LLC and they will tax deduct that. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, I own property under my personal name. Am I still able to tax deduct it? Yes, you can. And that's one of the great things again about real estate is it doesn't matter if it's under your personal name, if it is under your LLC, either way, all insurance premiums associated with that rental property are tax deductible. So you're probably asking yourself, what about my umbrella policy? What about the extra liability insurance that I have? Are those also tax deductible? The answer is yes, they actually are. For me, as a short-term rental operator and a mid-term rental operator, I have to have additional insurance for these properties. And guess what? They are tax deductible, but you wanna make sure that you talk to the right person, which is your CPA or accountant, to make sure that those are gonna be covered for you. One of the other things you might be asking yourself about is flood insurance. Is that considered to be a tax deduction? Yes, it actually is. Umbrella insurance policies that offer extra liability insurance are also deductible expense along with your mortgage insurance and even flood insurance. You can even deduct a proportional amount of your homeowner's insurance for your primary residence if you have tenants that are living in the property. So that means you're renting a home, you live there in the property and say you you have a property on uh, a listing on Airbnb or you have a travel nurse in your property. The amount that you can deduct will be proportional on the overall square footage of your home. Let's talk about any losses such as fire, floods. We just had a hurricane in California. What about those types of things? Yes, you can deduct those as well. Hurricanes and any theft can also be deducted by landlords in the unfortunate event of a natural disaster and even a crime conducted against your property. Property repairs are always tax deductible. That's another thing that you want to look at, tax deductions for your primary residence or your rental properties. But whether you are subject to depreciation rules, that depends on the improvement standard. And when I say improvement standard, the IRS will actually look at those things. So if you're repairing something to get it back to rentable condition, but did not add any significant real estate value, then there's no need to worry about depreciation. Painting the exterior of your home, basic landscaping, replacing old toilets are not considered improvements. However, if you were to gut that property, you rehab that, you add several rooms, you increase the value of the property, now you're in improvement territory and your accountant will need to split the hairs and figure out what needs to be done 
and what needs to be depreciated. So that and a long story is short, when it comes to the tax deductions that come along with your property, mortgage insurance, landlord insurance, all those things are able to be tax deducted. You wanna make sure that you're able to keep a close eye on all the receipts that you have for your properties, whether that's buying couches, whether that's stuff that you decided to improve on. You wanna make sure that you have all these things just in case anything were to happen. God forbid there is a hurricane or a natural disaster. You wanna make sure that you have those things readily and available for the IRS to look at or for your accountant to look at just in case. And for me, I usually keep those in a Google Doc along with every single one of my properties. Some people argue that consistently looking for deductions can lead to aggressive tax behavior, which might invite scrutiny from the tax authorities, which again is the IRS. Aggressive tax behavior can raise red flags, but understanding and leveraging legitimate deductions is well within your rights as property owners. It's about being informed, not aggressive. Always consult with a tax professional to ensure you're within boundaries of the IRS and of course the law. And I also wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Again, my name is Jesse Vasquez. You can follow along on my journey over on Instagram at the real Jesse Vasquez or over on YouTube at Jesse Vasquez as well. And I wanna thank you again so much and also thanking our friends over at steadily.com for allowing us to put this video together, but also you guys are able to understand tax strategies that can help save you some money. We will see you in the next one.